Hello, my Italian food fanatics. Well, today we are going to make a wonderful seafood dish, swordfish livornese. Livorno is a city on the west coast of Italy in Tuscany, in the region of Tuscany. And this is the style that is cooked there when they're making seafood. I'm not going to talk too much about it now because I will in the video. But before we get into the kitchen and cook this wonderful dish, please thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell so you know when I release another video. Share with your friends. Remember, sharing is caring. And leave a comment down below. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get in the kitchen and make this wonderful seafood dish. All right, let's get started. This is Swordfish Livornese in the style of Livorno, which is a city in Tuscany on the west coast. We're using swordfish that I've trimmed already, and I've also salted it lightly. That's Malden salt, so it looks like more than it really is. And the reason why we don't want to use a lot of salt is because we're going to be using olives and capers in the sauce. And so that's going to add a little bit of, uh, of salt to it as well. So we don't want to be liberal. We don't want to be, you know, we don't want to hold back, but we don't want to put too much. But if you, if there's a modicum of salt on there, that's going to be good. We'll set this aside while we prep our other ingredients. I'll be back. In the Livornese style today, we are going to first put our swordfish in a little bit of flour, pat that dry. We're going to use a little bit of white wine. We'll use some oregano. We're going to use some 100% California extra virgin olive oil. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to use some olives. I'm using both green and black Kalamata olives. The black ones are obviously Kalamata, the green ones something else. A little bit of chopped parsley in the end. And some garlic, an anchovy, a couple of bay leaves because they're small. We'll use some capers. And what makes Livornese Livornese is not only the garlic, but also a little bit of marinara sauce. And classically, we'll finish the dish with a little bit of butter. All right. I have prepped everything here, including slicing the garlic. The Livorno style is essentially the fish fried in oil and then served with a garlic marinara sauce and then in some recipes there's a copious amounts of parsley on top afterwards but it does use a little bit of white wine and of course olive oil so let's now go to the stove and make this thing all right first things first we'll put a little bit of heat under our skillet everything's going to be done in one pan believe it or not we're going to add a little bit of 100% uh, California extra virgin olive oil, and we'll wait for that to come up to temperature. What we're going to do is quickly, for about a minute on one side of the swordfish, and then we're going to turn the swordfish over and cook it on the other side for about a minute. We'll take it out, and then we'll make our sauce and put the swordfish back in, cover it up, and that way it will finish cooking on a very low heat. All right, our skillet is up to temperature. I've now dredged the swordfish in flour and we've patted off all the excess and we'll now just lay it down in there and let it cook for about a minute. All right, it's been about a minute. We'll turn it over. Look at that nice color that we're getting on there. That's exactly what we're looking for. I'll be back in another after another minute is a left. All right, it's now time to take the fish out. And we'll finish our sauce. So we still have the heat on. We'll add in a little bit of anchovy. We're going to get that melted into the sauce. Just like this. We'll then add in a little bit of garlic. Sliced very, very thin. And we're not going to let this cook too long. Maybe about 30 seconds to get a little bit of color, a tiny bit of color on there. We don't want too much, because in a second, there it goes. That's the garlic, that's, just, that's basically enough. And we're gonna deglaze. A little bit of white wine. And 
and we're going to let that reduce and I'll be back when this is reduced down. All right, it's been about a minute and our wine has reduced down a little bit, not too much. We don't want it to reduce too much, but the alcohol has been cooked out. Now we're going to add in our marinara sauce. We'll mix this around and get it incorporated with the wine. Very good. We'll add in our bay leaves. We'll add in our capers and our olives. And a little touch of oregano. And now we're going to let this come up to temperature and then we'll put the fish back in. All right. Our sauce has come up to temperature. We're going to now place the fish back in, nestle it in there. We're going to turn the heat down to very, very low. We're going to cover it and we're going to let it simmer like this very gently for about five minutes. All right, it's been about five minutes and our fish has been gently cooking away. Do you see how it just slowly bubbles that way? That's exactly what we want. Now we'll remove our fish and set it aside while we reduce this sauce down to a thicker consistency. Then I'm gonna turn the heat up and we're gonna bring this up to temperature and when it reduces down, I'll be back. All right, our sauce is reduced down to a proper consistency. As you can see, it's pretty thick. I'm now gonna remove our bay leaves. If I can find the other one. There it is. And we're gonna turn the heat off. Wait a couple of seconds, and then we're going to finish the sauce off with a little bit of butter. We'll do what is known in classical cuisine as Monte au beurre, which gives the finished sauce, as you can see, a very silky and velvety appearance, shiny. And that means we are now ready to dish it up. So let's go to the plate. All right, my Italian food fanatics, you saw me dish it up. Now it's time to see if our swordfish Livornese is any good. First, I gotta tell you, it's perfectly cooked. That five minutes, when we first took it out of the pan, the center, of course, was raw but then about five minutes on very, very gentle heat, bringing the center up to temperature slowly is the way to do it, all right? You can also do it in the oven. You could uh, brown off the two sides or get a little bit of color, not brown, and then put everything in the oven. I've also seen it started in the oven. Um, there's a hundred different ways that this recipe is done. I've done it in a very classical way as you can see by the finishing of it and the way the sauce is made and the meat or the fish is removed in this case, there are no rules. The rules are there are no rules and you can do it any which way you want. All right, so if you're from Livorno and you say, my mommy doesn't do it that way, it's okay, don't worry about it. It's all the same, <laughs> it's gonna taste the same. It may taste a little bit different depending on the olives that you use and the capers and the tomatoes and, and what have you. But for the most part, this is the way the dish is done. And you can make it your own way 
with your own ingredients that you get from your own place, okay? You can make it with other fish as well. It's not just limited, obviously, to swordfish. You can do whatever. It's a style. Basically, garlic in a tomato sauce. And again, I've heard of copious amounts of parsley, so we've added a little bit of parsley here. But essentially, it's tomato sauce with garlic and white wine, capers, olives, things like that. So, and I've added the anchovy in there to uh, give it a little umami, a little jus de sequoia. Uh, I've seen recipes without it. Again, there's a hundred ways to do it, but right now, let's taste it. Swordfish is perfect. I mean, it doesn't get juicier than this. And you know what? Garlic and tomato sauce goes with any type of fish. Hence, chipino, bouillabaisse, and the different tomato-based sauces that are served with seafood. Of course, there's no cheese here. Okay, please. No cheese on this. You can do it if you like, but this is one of those dishes. Fish and cheese just don't go together. It's a sin. I have to agree with the Italians when it comes to that. You just don't want to do that. Now, I've seen people, and I have made a recipe as well, where we've put Parmesan cheese on linguine and clams. But that was done in homage to a friend of mine who was an Italian-American. I mean, seriously, 100% Italian first generation that that's the way they did it all right that's a new york italian way it's not the italian way although i have seen people put cheese on fish in italy italians all right so now let's take a little taste of this sauce all the flavors are there mm -hmm. the wine the olives the capers the tomato obviously you can't really tell the anchovy. I can tell a little bit, but that's a background flavor that adds kind of like a base note to everything that gives it a foundation, an oomph, a, an unquantifiable um, flavor. And, that, and that's the case with anchovies in a lot of dishes. People eat them and go, wow, this is so delicious. But then you turn around and tell them, here, these are some anchovies. Let's put that in there. Oh, no, no, I don't like anchovies. So there's, you have to be secretive sometimes when you are making this stuff, so long as somebody's not allergic. You don't want to put peanuts in something where someone has a peanut allergy. But sometimes telling people that there's, you know, not telling them that there's anchovies in there is going to be a good thing. And then later when, it's, uh, when they've loved the dish, you tell them, by the way, there's anchovies inside. Oh, you know. <laughs> anyway, let me take one other bite. You got to try this. It's out of this world. Anyway, I'm going to finish this, this piece of fish. Please, do me a favor. Thumbs up, subscribe, everything should be right up here. Ring the bell, share, sharing is caring, and leave a comment down below. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch my channel. I really appreciate it. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a great day. I wish you good health, happiness, and prosperity. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.